Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness and this is We've Got Issues. We're filming on site here at Coquitlam City Centre Library and we thank the library for giving us a venue to carry out these interviews. I'd also like to acknowledge that we're filming on the traditional ancestral and unceded lands of Coquitlam First Nation. So we thank the Coquitlam who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So today we're joined by Will Davis, who is a former uh, BC Liberal and Federal Liberal candidate. So thank you so much for joining us today, Will. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, just to put a little bit of context around our conversation today, we currently have uh, four main parties. We have the BC Greens, which tend to be progressive, BC NDP, which are centre-left, we had BC United, which is centre-right, and then BC Conservatives, which um, are significantly further to the right. Um, I think we've seen recently a decline in popularity for the BC United Party, along with a surge in popularity for the BC Conservatives. And BC United uh, leader Kevin Falcon and BC Conservative leader John Rustad have been talking about some kind of a merge or a deal since December of 2023 and it was all sort of um, gone quiet, no, no deal was made. And then on August 28th we heard that um, Kevin Falcon had dissolved the election campaign for BC United and is throwing his support behind the BC Conservatives. Can you share with us some thoughts on how that affects the political landscape for voters? Absolutely. Um, yeah, that was a definite uh, shocking sort of day. And, uh, and those events were uh, unexpected, I believe. Um, now, the, the, the drop in popularity, the reality uh, of uh, donors drying up, uh, people, you know, um, second guessing. Key cabinet, former cabinet ministers and, and, uh, and leaders in the party were no longer going to be seeking re-election. The writing seemed to be on the wall. And it it was uh, it was ultimately um, as the rules are written in the hands of the leader, right. and uh, and Mr. Falcon decided to you know drop a smoke bomb and disappear. Um, it was a surprise to many of us, of course. Um, now you, as a former um, BC Liberal candidate for Coquitlam Millardville, you have chosen to endorse uh, Jennifer Blatherwick, who is currently running as a BC NDP candidate. Can you tell us why you're doing that? Sure. Uh, first of all, it's, it's, it's become um, a reality that many of us centrists and many, many of us uh, uh, federal liberals have no real party, no home uh, oh, okay. to, to turn to in this election. Uh, that's, a, that's just a fact. And so with, um, with the you know the closing of the liberal uh, BC United right. um, campaign. <laughs> lots of changes. Yeah, exactly. That didn't help either. Mm -hmm. That was also a decision of the same leader. Okay. And so when that leader decided to fold up the tents, the one thing I'll say about that is it was divisive. It was uh, decisive, <laughs> divisive as well, yes. but definitely decisive. So it was a the writings on the wall. I'm, you know, this is it. Uh, so that meant, however, that. Um, Stepping up and saying I support now the Conservatives, mm -hmm. after having you know made clear that there was a delineation between the two parties, right? In okay. repeated you know uh, examples, so including for the same things, yeah, um, including um, Mr. Rustat being removed from the party, right? Like right. at some point, um, when uh, the 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 BC United's fold, it's it it was presented by the former leader, I guess the current leader, Mr. Falcon, that we should all fall in line and support the Conservatives. Okay. And I don't think that's uh, his decision for all. Well, what make. are you hearing from the BC United community? Um, uh, do they feel like they have a voice or do they feel like they have a home anymore? Well, no, you know, absolutely not. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly that party was a the part of the Free Enterprise Party. There was, a, there was a, an understanding, there was an right. agreement. It was a Big Ten party. So uh, in some cases, for mm -hmm. some folks, they're going to find that offer to just support the cons uh, a reasonable one. Mm -hmm. For centrists that were part of the party, that were part of a free enterprise Big Ten 
coalition right. don't don't have to take for cash what is being offered, which is let's all throw our sort of support behind the conservatives at any cost that can't be the BC NDP. So in my consideration, and back to your original question, why uh, why now, why you support Jennifer, mm -hmm. um, I have, uh, for my personal reasons in my writing, I know Jennifer. I've known okay. Jennifer Glatherwick since 2008, when we were both parents at Rochester Elementary, and throughout, uh, and as uh, during her time as a uh, a school board trustee. Um, I feel uh, I know Jen. I, I believe that she has uh, the values, uh, the capacity and the competency to be uh, a good MLA and to really work diligently for the constituents of our riding. So for me, uh, A, it was a personal you know, connection with someone that I know that I've seen work right. and work for the community. Uh, but B, you know, I think that it's important for everyone in any riding to consider who those who those candidates are. So you're saying not only the party, but we should also be looking at the candidate. Well, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the values and the and the and uh, where they are coming from, why they're running, who they are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this these are these are all extremely important things. And so for me, looking at, at my options, Jen was the obvious option. Uh, and that I would almost argue prior to any of the big change. So for me, Jen was always someone that I would, you know, uh, pick up the phone or listen to and and hear her out and her and her uh, her beliefs and why she believes she could be the best MLA. And but again, when you're looking as a centrist for a party, mm -hmm. you need to really consider who's going to do the work. Now, the NDP have uh, that's not my party, right. certainly not federally and. And in BC, the BC uh, NDP have proven through Mr. Horgan and now with Mr. Eby that they have, uh, they're working in many cases, uh, certainly around education, uh, housing, healthcare. They're working towards uh, solutions from the center. And all good solutions need to come from the center. Okay. They need to be worked on, in my view, um, through, a, through a, you know, a, a logical, fair, um, distribution of uh, of, of uh, resources and and um, and decisions to make policy work for all. Okay, so I have a question around that because um, we were talking about Jennifer Blatherwick, and she's been very much out in the community, very vocal, very engaged, very involved. Um, we've seen the NDP and the Greens both come out and speak, and you as a formal. BC Liberal coming out and speaking and engaging with mm -hmm. the community, um, we're not seeing the Conservatives come out. Um, I haven't heard or seen much from them. Is that a concern or how do we deal with that? Well, it, it, it's, it is, a, to me, it's a concern. It's certainly making yourself available um, in, in, in splices and in when it when it favors your uh, your your narrative um, is 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 an important uh, thing to call out. So I agree with you that if you want to be the candidate, you've got to get on those doorsteps for sure. You've got to tell your story. You've got to show us your policies, which there's still some lacking from the Conservative Party of BC and and federally. But I'll I digress on that. Uh, but um, if you want to be my MLA. You've got to show up, okay. and you've got to speak, and uh -huh. you've got to be, you know, you've got to have, uh, you know, I, I know, having been, uh, you know, a candidate in few uh, elections, that there are lots of people that want to have mm -hmm. um, debates or discussions or forums and town halls, etc. So it's true that there can be a lot of them, but if you're showing up to none of them, that's a problem. Yes. Okay, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that yeah. version there. But um, to get back to the situation with the BC United and, and Conservatives, I think there were about 30 BC United candidates who had been nominated or who had, you know, um, invested significant resources of their own into getting a campaign going. Um, when this decision was made, it seemed to catch them off guard. So can you comment about the transparency around that decision-making process or, you know, why were they caught off guard? It was ultimately, uh, according again to the rules, one person's decision uh, okay. to be able to make. So I think they were caught off guard because um, this, this 
like this is an unprecedented decision. Mm -hmm. This is not something it's very that unusual. It's very unusual. And and you know, I guess the calculus was, okay, I can rip the Band-Aid off now, or you know, have a, a speech on mm. October what is it, nineteenth? Right. So yes. we're we're you know, and if I stay that long, I will hurt the opportunity to get seats in, in different places. So there was some math there for sure that um, the, 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 uh, the party members sh couldn't have been, uh, imagine having that conversation right. as, a, as a whole group. Okay. That would have been, that would have been very, um, it, it would have been an incredibly difficult conversation and it would have been complicated by how many different voices there are. Interesting. If, so, if, a, if someone's a sitting MLA and has a better chance of winning, right. they'll have a totally different perspective than someone who's on the bubble. Right. And if the leader has to make a decision, again, the one thing that is true in that decision is that it was uh, decisive. It happened and it was... And there was no debate around it as far as we could see. As far as we know. And, yeah. and you know, uh, you know, and it left some really good people, yes. uh, you know, in, in having to scramble. And uh, like Ian Patton out in uh, Delta, who, you know, has thousands of dollars of brochures and whatever, Yes. That are those are very real costs. Oh yeah, now they're oh, yes. now you, I guess you could sell them on eBay or something or whatever if that still exists. Recycle them. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. you do. Exactly. Um, so, according to the agreement that was made between BC United and Conservatives, uh, the um, you, the BC United candidate nominations were withdrawn in order to allow BC Conservatives to draw from that pool of incumbents and, and candidates. How does that affect sort of the whole trust relationship um, and democracy in general for those candidates that who had been nominated? Again, I, I, my view on this is that they made a decisive mm -hmm. choice and, and it was not uh, the every part of that infrastructure that existed right. had to be closed is is what I understand. So if you do that, you give then those candidates that want to move forward that 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 opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's that simple on a macro level, right. but it's not simple when it came to okay now you're running over here and you're doing that you know this kind of uh, Jenga or whatever they right. had to do to Moving the you know pieces sure. Around and, yeah. Like none of this is in, uh, uh, enviable uh, tasks, right? None of this is like, but hey, look, if you want to run for leader, if you want to do the, the job, then you got to you got to live with your decisions and you have to make, you know, you have to you have to be the one who's uh, that's held we accountable. To bear the consequences. Sure. I mean, um, what are the consequences for Mr. Falcon? He's he's out like he's yeah. there's no longer, you know, the, you know, I think he's, they're hopefully doing the right thing by our civil servants and uh, the, or those political appointees that that need to be uh, made right with their uh, with their wages other than that you know it's mm -hmm. just a uh, he's really sidelined himself okay so let's talk a little bit about John Rustad um, we've talked about Kevin Falcon John Rustad was removed from the BC Liberal caucus in 2022 over his questioning of the scientific consensus around climate change um, can you speak a little bit about the candidates that were not comfortable with those sort of, um, you know, um, beliefs or understandings who were running as BC Liberals because they believed in BC Liberal values and now they're running as BC Conservative. Can you speak to that, the candidates that have shifted from BC Liberal very quickly to BC Conservative? Right, or BC United. Oh, BC United, yeah. sorry, no, that's of course. <laughs> Everything's uh, changing so quickly. Yeah, it's, right? it certainly is. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I heard the, the title New BC Liberal uh, has been rejected as a, an official name. Oh, it's but, also, yeah. yeah. So the United, uh, I, I feel strongly that the, 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 at the time that decision had been taken, I wasn't uh, involved. I don't know uh, what the, you know, what the discussions were. The comments themselves merited some type of explanation, or right. you know, or uh, retraction, or something, and they weren't coming. So, if you're the BC United party, as they were, mm -hmm. um, you need to want to continue to be a free enterprise party that is a big tent party that is a coalition. Right. And so, uh, it made sense that you know, somewhere this election will be won with 
I believe, uh, people that look to the center for reason, for fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. for you know uh, good governance. And if you're going to say that um, that uh, climate change is you know uh, either a hoax or in some part untrue, right. and you're going to say, as I've seen recently, that uh, you know um, that the, the vaccines were some type of way of controlling us. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a new uh, a, a new uh, thing that I've heard. It makes me feel like uh, I'm correct in thinking. How do centrists? Where do I find support for my family? Right. Where do I go moving forward so that we're not heading back? What values best align with your own? That's right. Yeah. And so in my case, in my candidate is Jennifer Blatherwick, and that um, and Mr. Eby and the, the and Mr. Horgan before him really made efforts and strides towards. Uh, some uh, something for all uh, and and governing in some sense uh, from the center. Okay, now you had spoken earlier, and I just want to circle back um, about the staff and how they had been working in good faith, and they have possibly been left out in the cold. Um, BC taxpayers are uh, potentially on the hook for making up those costs and and paying. Um, those wages and severance or whatever costs are associated with them. Uh, given all that's happened, including that, can BC United or a centre-right party make a comeback? Or will it, do you think we'll see something different? Like, what's the future for BC United? Well, I think that one, that, that, uh, that uh, ship has sailed and mm -hmm. sunk. Okay. Right. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it was taken from B.C. Liberal to B.C. United to Tombstone. Okay. And so, so it's a one way it's ticket that that will end. And with that, uh, I feel there's a real opportunity. And I know some of my uh, friends and people that I that I have uh, uh, worked with in, in, in these in this world, in the political world, right. that there is a movement of people that will get together and start organizing and figuring out so it'll be what like could a phoenix coming rising again is something a little bit different yeah i'd say i i, I hesitate to say phoenix because it's not necessarily going to come from that okay. it, you know um there's there will be uh you know a viable centrist option in in british columbia i'm sure i'm happy to participate in the in in seeing that uh, happen in some form so there's a need for a center right we can't like having a center-left, centrist, um, a progressive, and a far-right or further right is not going to represent everybody's, the whole spectrum of, of political opinions and thoughts? Yeah, it's, you know, at some point, you know, we do want to, you know, label things left and right. Uh, and, and, and in some cases, like the ones that we mentioned about, Questioning vaccines, questioning uh, you know um, um, uh, climate change, uh, you know um, that is on the right, you know. But on the left is also you know overspending or you know not having a fiscal uh, responsibility somewhere in that center mm -hmm. that isn't right or left, but in the center, logical center, is where uh, I believe uh, I personally find. Um, my views and i believe there's room for that party uh and hopefully it's one that is you know i think maybe the days of a big tent uh party that is center right may maybe may be gone if there's a conservative party that continues then the question will be you know who's serving the middle okay no um i appreciate that um do you think in the current election We've seen the challenges. We've just talked about some of those challenges. Are there also opportunities? We've seen some of the BC United candidates running as independents. We have some strong green candidates. We have, like, do you think things will be mixed up? Do you see opportunity here as well as challenges? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. If, if this was an inevitable breakup, mm -hmm. Um, then there needs to be a positive step forward. And I feel, as I've mentioned, um, there are people, much brighter people than I, that are going to mobilize, and I'm happy to be a part of anything that is going to look like the opportunity for us to consider 
where we get best served our our views as uh, uh, as again a centrist or a federal liberal. Um, what can we do to create something that that uh, that delivers for families? Uh, you know, having five children of my own, education. You relate to that? <laughs> absolutely, education, mm -hmm. housing, healthcare, healthcare. All these are very important uh, building blocks to a yes. you know a, a really healthy, healthy society and a healthy environment. Do you want to hazard any guesses as to what how this election may play out? Like I know it's, <laughs> we've seen polls, we've seen all kinds of mm -hmm. things. I'm just interested if you have any thoughts on what you might think might happen. I'm really, uh, I'll, I can assure you that on October 20th, I'll be able to tell you everything. <laughs> yes, <laughs> kind of like after the lottery. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, why didn't you play these numbers? Um, the um, the, the, the unpredictability of uh, turnout will be a, a real a so key. So we need to encourage people to get out and vote. Absolutely. This yeah. is not an election for people that feel that their, 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 um, their, their best interest for them and their families mm -hmm. is being served. They need to, you know, if centers feel like they've been left in, in the dark or left right. w homeless or without a party, uh, you need to make a choice and you need to get off your couch or whatever and make sure that you get out and vote. So it's, an, it's a very important election uh, in terms of those that want to continue progressive uh, ways uh, that they figure out uh, a way to put some trust in their candidate, in my case, the BC NDP, and, and see them through th the finish line because this is a consequential election. And as we see in Canada and across the world, there are uh, real, um, real. Um, there's realities, the uh, parties and, and and movements that are happening, that we need to make sure that we do everything we can mm -hmm. to to continue to be a, a, the great progressive province that we are. So do your research and get out and vote. That's right. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today, Will. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. This is We've Got Issues, and we've been speaking with Will Davis, who is a former uh, BC Liberal candidate, and um, we really appreciate hearing his views on the upcoming elections. So get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you.